right. Somebody just said go. That was Cassie. Cassie said go. She's very excited. So here we are. Limit process, Bill. Nihama. So the the early question was, do I put the F here? The F in this case, Roman, right here. This F is the three. In this case, Roman, F, this F is the what? It's the square here. So let's start this. Here's the notation your professor's looking for. F prime at T is equal to the limit as the change in T. Somebody said, can I change the X? You should ask your professor because otherwise some of them are just really jerks about it. So I'm going to leave it at T for now if you don't mind. But if you want to change yours to X, at least make a thing that says let uh, X equal, let uh, T equal X or something. All right? So the derivative F prime at X is equal to the limit as the change in t approaches 0 of 3, Roman, is that f value that you were asking about, times t plus change in t, right? I almost wrote x. Minus t plus change in t squared, right? That's this whole part right here. We just completed this whole part right here, didn't we? And then this negative sign right here is this one. Is that all right? And then we're going to take our f of x, which happened to have been 3t minus t squared. Here's where they're going to try to catch us. So I'm going to put this, these brackets around here to remind, remind myself that we're supposed to take this whole f of x out. Okay? Can you see that, Becca? Becca? <laughs> yes, I can see that, Mr. Lindelof. Thank you very much. Okay, good. All over what? Change in t. From here, we just have to expand, right? So we're going to expand this thing out. The good news is you're only going to do this for a couple of weeks, a week probably at the university, and then they're going to move to something else. So just get this down, and then it shows up on the final pad, so you have to keep it in mind, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and distribute stuff out. I'm going to distribute here and here. I'm going to, right, I'm going to square this thing first. Remember, please remember that exponents are not distributable over addition, are they? So we actually have to FOIL this out, don't we, in our expansion, right? And then we deal with this negative sign. So I think it ends up looking like this. When you continue your work, you don't have to repeat this, but you have to repeat the limit process part. So your professor is going to expect you to write the limit as the change in t approaches 0 here. I'm going to, I'm going to do this 3t plus 3 change in t. This negative sign is this one. Remember, I can't do anything with this yet, but we know how to expand this, right? It would be t squared, won't it? Plus what? Good, 2t two, two change in t, right? Isn't that right? Plus change in t squared. Minus what? Aubrey? Minus 3t, see what I'm saying? That's the trap right there, plus all over change in t. And remember, we have to distribute this negative sign too, don't we? So this goes to negative, this becomes negative, and this becomes negative, and then can take away the brackets. Is that all right? All over change in t. Now what? Gregor. Yeah, exactly. Gather the like terms. So we have 3t here, negative 3t there. t squared here, right? Negative t squared there. Isn't that right? So we get the limit as the change in t goes to 0 of 3 change in t minus change in t squared am i missing something where is it oh good job pat thank you minus 2t change in t good job because i would have been right now what yeah man factor out so factor out factor out and what are we going to factor out gregor factor out one change in t that ends up looking like the limit 
as the change in t goes to zero of right bring that change in t out right so we get three e here minus change in t here minus two t here all over change in t now what miss boozer Exactly. And that's victory right there, isn't it? That's really where we can start, to, right? Now take the limit, right? Take the limit. So, in other words, let change in t equal 0. So we, we, we'd get 3 minus 0, wouldn't we? If change in t is equal to 0, minus 2t. And we would be able to say now that the derivative f prime at x, oops, f prime at t, is equal to 3 minus 2t. And what was our original function, Greg? It's 3t minus t squared. How many of you agree? You're just using the sum and difference rule and a power rule here. That's what you expected, isn't it? What's the first derivative of 3t? 3. And what's the first derivative of negative t squared? Negative 2t. And isn't that what we got as our derivative? Right? Okay. 